for all of God's blessings upon our lives this month of September I'd like us to lift up our voice one more time and give him thanks and bless him you deserve all the praise you deserve all the glory you deserve all the glory we give you all the thanks we give you all the glory for all the blessings for all the favors thank you for your mercies upon our lives upon our families upon the church we give you praise for your interventions for wiping away tears for disappointing the counsels of the wicked for disgracing the plans of the enemy we say thank you we give you all the glory for every help for every supply for every favor for journey mercies we traveled by day and by night you preserved our lives we say thank you mighty god for settling many families we return all glory to you dependable god reliable god unchangeable god the never failing one we say thank you we say thank you we say thank you glory be to your holy name thank you all all this while you have helped us thank you Jesus In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because you have given him thanks for September. Yes, Lord. Whatever is the remnant of your blessings yes, that is yet to be delivered, yes. this week there will be commotion of favor. Amen. The four winds of the spirit will deliver your portion. Amen. The carriers of your breakthrough, they will locate you. Amen. No one connected to your blessing will rest this week until they meet you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Wherever decisions have been taken to stop your blessing, I obtain their counsel in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. Make that amen louder. As you are giving God glory today, the earth will surrender your portion. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The earth will surrender your portion. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Amen. Congratulations. Please get seated. God bless you. Gateways to a world of financial fortune. Before we go on, uh, like us to second service, we are going to change the order. People that are giving special Thanksgiving offering, that are doing special Thanksgiving, is different from general Thanksgiving. That's the practice of Living Faith Church worldwide. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The uh, general thanksgiving is collected after the message coupled with dancing and celebration. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's the practice I was born into. So from second service, that will be the order. Are you hearing me now? Uh -huh, because some people are coming newly. They can mistake that one that you are collecting now to be the normal offering. And when it comes to Thanksgiving, say, which one have I been given before now? <laughs> Praise God. And so whoever is collecting the offering, you sound it that this offering is the normal offering. 
the uh, general thanksgiving offering will be coming after the message. Is that clear? Praise God. Because I know some, when it's Thanksgiving Sunday, some people don't even know whether it's a, we are collecting one offering or two offering. But know it now, every Thanksgiving Sunday is double offering. Is that, is that clear? Uh, so that you won't go to Canaan land one day and you say, ah, have you not given offering before now? Uh, no, this is the practice of living faith church worldwide. Amen. Gateway to a world of financial fortune. Ignorance can punish you. And you'll be thinking that God is the one punishing you. They know not, neither will they understand. You see, all the foundation of the earth are out of course. Now hear me. Misfortune is not your portion in this kingdom. It's not. Much more financial misfortune. I wish above all things that thou mayest what? Prosper. And be in health. Even as thy soul what? Prospereth. God delights in you having money. What we call financial misfortune is money bad luck. You get bad luck for money. I want you to understand it in the, in the, the lowest level so that you understand it. So it's not your portion if you are the redeemed of the Lord. Because scripture says he was made poor so that through his poverty we might become what? Rich. So you must desire it because it is your right. But there is what you must do to experience fortune, financial fortune. Whether you like it or not, things will grow harder. Scripture says, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness, the what? The people. So if you are waiting for one dollar, will be one naira, one dollar. One naira, na la you. All you just need to do is to have more money. Say with me, more money. more money. Financial fortune is the heritage of every child of God. But there is a way to it. There is a way to what? And if you don't know the way to it, you may, you may begin to conclude in your mind that God is favorable to some and not favorable to the others. But scripture says, this same Lord is good unto all and richly bless all that calls upon his name. Scripture made us to understand again that the labor of the foolish man wearieth every one of them for he knoweth not how. Men, I want to let you know there is a how to. To move from misfortune to financial fortune. To move from disappointment to appointment. To move from difficulty to opportunity. There is a how to. You say, for that will show me that part of life. There is a part that makes this thing easy. There is a part that makes these things easy. No wonder in Job 28, they say, where can this wisdom be found? He said, the, 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 the dab says, it's not with me. The wind says, it's not with me. He said, where can it be found? 
You hear me? You must know the way out. And wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it. Knowing what to say and saying it. Knowing where to go and going there. You can't be walking with misfortune people and experience fortune. In the world, they say if you walk with five broke people, you will be the sixth broke one. If you company with, the, with the five poor people, you will be the sixth poor man. No wonder. Go and check it anywhere. The rich, they don't like company with the poor. It's not hatred. Both are contagious. Poverty is contagious. Likewise, riches is also what? Don't doubt. I'm not lying, you know. <laughs> because poor people console themselves. That's what it be, you. <laughs> but you are checking out today. I say you are checking out today. Hear me? We are ordained to grow in fortune, not to grow in misfortune. The more financial misfortune you have, the more limited you can walk. Your operations are limited. You will just be desiring this. In fact, even your children's need will be staring at your face. You will, be, you, you will just be helpless. Why? Misfortune. Financial misfortune. But hear me, scripture said in Job 36 and verse 11, if they obey and serve me. Don't forget in the teaching series, there is a God part and there is a man part. We must take care of the God part now in the third service. Okay, in the second service, I'll do it in the second service. We're going to be dealing with the man's part. If they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure. I like us to understand financial misfortune is a spirit. Likewise, financial fortune also is a spirit. Bad luck is a spirit. Favor also is a what? There is someone that can be hanging around you now and be driving away blessings from you. And when you say, be like saying, since when you come, now bad luck, the entire year. Oh, yeah, go, 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 go. There is also who can come your way and favor will begin to follow you. Even Pharaoh himself said, God has blessed me because of Joseph. There is someone that must step in and favor will begin to come. And there is someone that can also step in and favor will begin to go. Who teaches you determines what you experience. There must be someone that must teach you what to do. Anyone you see doing bad now, he learned it from someone. The, 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 have you seen anyone that was giving battle and is written on his forehead? He go do bad. Uh, okay, let me put it this way. Have you seen anyone that was giving battle with a cigarette in his hand? You'll be a chain smoker. Or have you seen anyone that was giving battle with a bottle as he was coming out from the womb? He will be a drunkard. Now lie. He learned it from somewhere. Likewise also, someone must put you into the practice before it will begin to answer. Financial fortune can never be possible without covenant practice. Say with me, covenant practice. And that's why in Genesis chapter 8, reading from verse 20, Genesis chapter 8, reading from verse 20, 
And Noah built an ark unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. The verse 22, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So by divine arrangement, our fortune experience is to be seasonless. Seasonless. Why? Seed time and harvest time shall not what? Cease. If it must not cease, then you must be a seasonless practitioner. Not occasional practitioner. Many only practice it when it looks as if it's convenient for them. Hear me? It is against the law and against the rule. It's against the law and against the rule. If you want to experience perpetual fortune in growing sequence, you must keep practicing what is working. He that goeth forth, Bearing precious seed to sow shall doubtless return again. Return again. The first thing that will guarantee the flow of fortune for any child of God, he must obey the law of titan. Titan is not a suggestion. Titan is a commandment. Anyone that is not a titan is under a curse from God. Now God curse you, no be pastor curse you. Not even your village. Not even the man that is angry with you. Malachi chapter 3, let's read it from verse 6. The way you are looking at me, I'm not comfortable. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not what? Verse 7. Even from the day of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return to you, say the Lord of hosts. But ye have said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes. And what? Look at verse 9. Read it. I didn't say so. Did I say so? Ye are caused with a cause. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Ye are cause. That's what we call self-inflicted causes. Your misfortune, now you buy them with your hand. Your hardship, now you collect them by yourself. A father, a mother can bring hardship upon his children. By deliberate ignorance and stubbornness. God understand now. Huh? God understand that. Huh? God no understand though. Who obey the law now in the favor? Ye are cursed with a curse. You know the curse? Do you know the curse? The heaven over thee will be like brass. And the earth will burn like coffin. That's the curse. That's the most terrible curse any child of God should come under. The curse of the Lord. When God calls you, which prophet? Is it 70 days fasting that will bring you out? 
lie lie the moment titan is initiated the heavens must open the heavens must do what must open open So it's time for you to return. I've told God I don't have grace to pastor poor people. Because the anointing of Oyedekmo must work. It's working in my life. So it must work in the people I'm pastoring. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Uh -huh. I'm not joking, no, I mean it too. So that's why I must learn everything that makes prosperity a reality. You can't be poor under me. Except you have vowed to be poor, I cast you out. <laughs> Even if the forces in your village has vowed that you know, under me, I must break their hold over your life. <laughs> Titan is a practice. If you can't give God 10 naira, you can't give him 100 naira. My tight booklet, when I started paying 15 naira, is still alive. From time to time, I bring it out. I show my children and say, see when I started tithing. From 15 naira to 25 naira to 15 naira to 100 naira. That's how the thing started growing. Started growing, started growing. I remember one time. I won't forget that day. I was to give a tithe of 220,000. It's like they are using syringe to draw blood from my body. <laughs> That's when I knew that tithing is a spirit. It's life. But after that jink was broken, no, it's a toy. No, I passed that rim. I don't struggle with it again. When you break, you don't break. If you are still struggling now, now poverty spirit, they hold you. If you are still struggling with tithing, now poverty spirit, they hold you. Why? Satan can never encourage you to pay your tithes. Write it down, I said so. That's why anytime you want to pay, you say, be careful. No, my pastor, sweet mouth. Oh. Permit me to say this, I'm not using sweet mouths. Even my little children, they have known how to pay tithes. You dash them money, the first thing they will do is to go and bring out tithes. I remember when we went to Vish uh, Vishwabi one time. Bishop gave them offering. He said, we, they gave him, so he now packaged back for them. So I said, mommy, Bring out our tithe. Train up a child in the way that she go. And when he grows, he will not depart from it. It is what they see you do. That's what they practice. So if you are not a tighter, you are making things to be tight for everybody in your family. Some say, I'm, I'm in business. I don't know how to calculate it. Uh, but you know how to calculate your profit. So nobody can experience financial fortune without being a faithful tighter. Faithful what? Faithful. You must be faithful. He that is faithful in little, he say much shall be what? Added. God sees your sequence of progression. He sees how you are growing. And you know, check it. That's the only place where God said, prove me now. Is there any other place from Genesis to Revelation? Come and borrow my concordance. Prove me now here with and see if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Prove me now. If I'm a liar, he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. Even in Leviticus 17 and verse 30. Leviticus 27 and verse 30. 27. Leviticus 27 and verse 30. And all the tithes of the land, whether of the seed of the land, of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord. It is holy. Unto what?
So all your all-round fortune, tithing is number one. If you can't practice tithing, are you hearing me now? Don't give prophet offering. You are a liar. It will not bail you out. In fact, it is dangerous for any pastor to collect prophet offering from any person that is not a tither. You won't be blessed if you like go and be prophesying. Because he cannot disobey God and obey you and expect God to answer. And God will not be stamping. Now lie, can't work. You must obey the law of tithing before any other thing can work. It's not what you do occasionally, it's what you do consistently. Consistently. Make it a lifestyle. You have set, hear me? The spiritual controls the physical. When you do it, heaven is underbound. He said, prove me now. And you know, God, God has taken his integrity in that area. He said, by myself have I sworn. In blessing, I will do what? Bless you. In multiplying, I will do what? Multiply you. Do you know what? Even if you fail to pay your tithe, the evil fathers of your father's house, evil powers of your father's house, have already been drawing tithe from you. Tithing gives you a voice in the realm of the spirit. Your great grandfathers we are paying tithe to the evil authors. Am I correct? So why are you doing as if it's, I'm not saying anything? They were paying tithe. So what our tithing does for us is to silence the voice that has vowed that we will not go far. Remember when they were back coming out from Egypt, God told Moses, carry the people with their sheep, with everything, go to the mountain to worship me. Pharaoh said, I will allow you go, but you will not go with your sheep. That's why Satan will prefer you to serve God in poverty. Just be a normal church member. No wonder people around us, they have opportunity to mock us. Say, if Christianity is your type, I don't want. Why? No evidence. But they can't see my own and not say they don't like. Are you wrong saying that? Huh? Go to the mountain and worship, but don't go with your sheep. Don't go with your cattle. Serving God in poverty is a mockery to God. It's a mockery on redemption. In fact, your redemption is not complete if there is no evidence of prosperity. I say so is in the Bible. Even God himself said, my city through prosperity shall be spread abroad. Now, as an individual, as a family, how can you accomplish your family dream in poverty? It cannot work. It can't work. So, practicing tithing is keeping the heavens open. The next thing is your offering. We have different kinds of offerings. Different kinds of giving. Giving to the poor. Giving to the needy. The normal church offering. There are some people since they, since they started coming to church is 20 naira. God has not blessed them more than 20 naira. For the past five years, your offering has not changed. What you are saying is that God, you are wicked. Your offering has not changed. But your phone has been changing. Your shoe has been changing. Your headgear has been changing. <laughs> Yami, it's your offering that delivers you from suffering. I won't forget one carpenter that was working for us in one of our stations. He had a message like this. His offering has not crossed 20 naira. So he decided to prove God by giving 50 naira. Guess what happened? He started getting more jobs. He said, bless this thing, they walk out. He moved up again to 70 naira. Should be God, he said, he said, prove me now, hear it. So he started proving it. Before you know what's happening, he said, he came and gave testimony, even in Pigeon, he said, 
He said, now I know that this thing is not just black and white. It's real. It's real. It's real. I want to tell you, it is real. You remember one day, we were putting offering for our children. Do you know what, uh, who, who said it? Daddy, why are you giving us 100 naira? You have passed that level now, Daddy. Little children. No, but then they walk on. I mean, they walk. <laughs> you see? Daddy, you have passed that level now. Why are you giving us 100 naira? No, 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 no. Change it. Change it. Change it. <laughs> Should I tell you something? When they live with this practice, it can change. For it to change for you also. Now hear me. It is what you give that determines what you attract. What you give determines what you do what? Attract. If you are not attracting financial opportunity, check what you are giving. Give, it shall be do, it shall be what? Giving back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Whatsoever a man soweth, he said, that shall he reap what? Also. Check what you are sowing. He that soweth sparingly shall reap what? Sparingly. If you are careful in your giving, God will also be careful in his blessing. Anything that is telling you, be careful, be careful. God also too will be careful. Because he said to the faithful, I will show myself what? Faithful. To the crooked, I will show myself what? Shrewd. You can't be smarter than the one that gave you head. Your craftiness is not paying you. Hear this? Misfortune is self-sponsored. You can bail out. There is no limit to how far you can bless, even beyond where you are walking. So check your giving. Scripture said that poor you will always have in your midst. That's apart from normal offering now. The poor is your opportunity. God will not allow the poor to come to you if the money is not in your hand. I bless people beyond church or welfare purpose. If it's in my hand and I know the need is genuine, I will give it. Why? Because he that gives it to the poor does what? What does he mean to lend? Lending goes with interest. And if I'm lending to God, it's a good, it's a good ground. Which means he must pay me with something higher. And also, giving to the prophets. I've discovered genuine prophets don't beg. They don't beg members. For what? My supply is not determined by you. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. My supply is not determined by you. Yeah. My supply is determined by me. Yeah. It's what I give that determines what God flows back. You can choose to withhold your own. But I will not withhold my own. Because as far as I'm releasing it, they are swearing blessing upon my life. Upon my family. Oh, I just remembered went sometime, some months back to go and bless God's servant. Joshua B. He said, you mean you people brought this for me? You mean you people brought this for me? I won't forget that word. He said, come up to the realm of our blessings. I hope you know that realm is a good realm. A realm of no lack. A realm where before the need arise, the supply is on ground. Hear me? Your heavenly father gives you a place in heaven. But your spiritual father determines your portion on the earth. No wonder when prophets swear blessing, he sticks. It does what? And the more they swear their blessing, the more you are pushed into fortune. Fortune is in levels.
And also take advantage of kingdom promotion, kingdom projects. Some people are only waiting for when announcement is made. There are smarter people. When they spot opportunity, they key into it. One of our members in um, Joss, in Rayfield, he was believing God for his next promotion to be among those to be promoted commissioner in the Nigerian police. He just came to the church and the Spirit of God laid it in his heart to tile the whole place where we are using presently. He tiled the whole place. And before you know what's happening, without Godfather, he was listed for the rank of assistant commissioner. He has changed level again. Oh. So it is what you do, not who do you. It's what you do, what? What you do, not who do you. You can't undo me. <laughs> Let me tell you, money is double-edged. I can use my money and fight you. If I, if I saw for you, I don't kill you. No witch can swallow my sacrifice. Did you hear what I said? No witch can swallow my sacrifice. We'll talk about that in second service. Your prayer can be hindered, but not your sacrifice. Yes? When Daniel prayed, scripture said the prince of Persia resisted the angels. But not your sacrifice. Your sacrifice makes you more dangerous. We'll talk about that later. I've mentioned giving, tithing, kingdom promotion, giving to the poor, giving to the less privileged, your normal church offering, giving to prophets. Now, the last one is be committed to right speaking. Don't talk poor. Don't talk lack. And no get. No money. No market. It's a sign of further misfortune. You are increasing your hardship. There is nothing in my pocket. No. Let the weak say I am strong. Whatever you don't want to see, don't say. If you say it, you will see it. Say no before an angel is an error. <laughs> Once you say it, they carry it to God. Say not a confederacy, what they call a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear. When men are saying there is a casting down, thou shalt say there is a lifting up. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You use your mouth to draw favor. Others are using their mouth to draw gossip. To draw backbiting. To draw hatred. Keep drawing. You are compounding your misfortune. Scripture says hidden in the tongue is what? Life and death. He said them that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So whatever you are saying now is what you will be eating. They ask me how is Lafia? It's a blessed land. Saturated with blessings. Saturated with favor. Hear me? I've not gone to a place and went low. I always go high. I tell you the truth. I lie a lot. Right speaking. Don't say money has finished. Money cannot finish. For where? Even for central bank. Money cannot finish. Don't say there is no enough food in the store. Which storehouse? My God shall command his blessings into thy storehouses. Oh, some people don't even know it's in the Bible. Oh, you don't know? Deuteronomy 20, 28. Studio put it for them. I think verse 7. Let's see it. So if your storehouse is dry, now your mouth is not clean now. 
The Lord shall cause, okay, verse 8. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouses. Yo, now one small kubiku. But God say what? Storehouses. So all of you that are building, don't build small storehouse for your wife. Oh. Be building massive storehouse. Oh, you are not you are not complimenting what I'm saying. Please think big so that God can give you big. Are you know what I'm saying now? Don't talk small. Money is coming. Favor is coming. Supply is coming. Breakthrough is coming. Misfortune is a choice. And financial fortune also is what? A choice. You choose your choice. So you do what? Choose your choice. I want you to hear this. You can check out of misfortune. You can check out of financial misfortune. If things are not going the way you want it, steer of something that will guarantee the change. No wonder scripture say, what things soever you desire, anyhow you want it, you can get it. And lastly, your faith is also connected to your fortune. Blessed is she that believe it. For there shall be a performance. They got not the land in possession by their arm. Neither did their own arm save them. By thy arm and the light of thy countenance. Because thou hadest a favor. There is a connection between favor and fortune. But what connects us to fortune is determined by our faith. If you believe, you will experience So if you want to be seen, fortune, hear me, it is possible. All you just need to do, understand this, it is your covenant right, it's your covenant heritage, it is your portion in destiny, and as you believe it, and you walk in line with it, just as scripture says, walk out your salvation, anything you desire, you can walk it out. You can work out your financial change. You can tell yourself, I refuse to suffer again. I have suffered enough. Whatever makes it work, Lord, you are not a liar. I am proving you from this Sunday. You have said you will open the windows of heaven to pour me out a blessing. From today, I will be paying my tithe regularly. Hear me also. Even though you are a church worker, if you are not a tither, you will still suffer. Even though you are a pastor, if you are not a tither, you will still suffer. God does not bless title. He bless practice. I had it from Bishop Abue. Any pastor that is not a tither does not have any right to stand here and say be blessed. God won't confirm it. Because you are not a practitioner of what you are saying. So if you want your experience to change, start taking a step. Take the step. Take the step. Take the step. Misfortune is a choice. Fortune also is a choice. Rise up to your feet. The lepers, they said, why do we stay here and die? <laughs> Can't we go into the city? If we go, they may spare us. Hear me and hear me well. Why do you want to remain in misfortune and die? It's time to arise and enter the place of your change. I want you to lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, I take a stand today. Today, mark the end of financial misfortune in my life. Today, mark the end of financial hardship in my destiny, in my family, in my career. 
today mark the end of lack today mark the end of financial misfortune in the name of Jesus today mark the end of financial misfortune in my life today mark the end of financial limitation financial frustration today mark the end you are a good God you open it your hand wide and you satisfy the desire of every living thing Lord I am breaking out of financial misfortune today I make a decision to be consistent in my giving in my tithing Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. All eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. This is your best moment. You can labor and still not see sweet. But Jesus can be your Lord and you end up a beggar. You want to make it right with Jesus? That is the beginning point of your turnaround. He you say, I am the way out of hardship. I am the way out of poverty. I am the way out of suffering. No one that say, come unto me all you that are burdened and are heavy laden and I will give you rest including financial rest. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are. Put your right hand on your chest as I'm doing now, and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray this prayer 